Okay, in our last lesson, we talked about making cells. So um, I had the, uh, the zinc copper cell, didn't I? I'm going to have a I'm going to have a magnesium cell this time. If I put some magnesium into magnesium sulfate, I'll have a solution of magnesium ions. And what am I going to have over, over here? Some other, some other metal over here. Let's have silver. No, no silver. Shiny. All right. Silver ions. And then if I connected that up to a voltmeter and make sure that I've got a salt bridge here. I might remember it. my salt bridge that I used in the last lesson was just to roll that bit of filter paper soaked in both solutions so the ions um, can move around. As long as the ions are, are moving, well, we've, got, we've got electrons, which way are the electrons going? Magnesium is going to be giving away electrons, isn't it? So they're going to be going this way. Magnesium's giving away electrons, so they're moving that way. So we'd need to equalize that charge to create a, a circuit. So I'd have, probably have positive ions moving through the salt bridge. Uh, salt bridges, you can buy salt bridges. They're, they're um, the thin glass tubes uh, and they're usually filled with a, a special gel and then the gel is infused with um, potassium nitrate solution. Why potassium nitrate? Because all potassium compounds and all nitrates are soluble. So because what you don't want is ions getting into your salt bridge and, and uh, precipitating because then that would clog it up, your ions wouldn't be able to flow and nothing would work. So they use potassium nitrate solution infused into a gel and then that just sits in there and the ions can move around. And if a few potassium ions or nitrate ions get into your solutions there, it's not going to cause problems. It's not going to cause precipitation anyway. So that's the salt bridge. Um, so what have we got here? We've got a we've got a cell. We didn't really mention that yesterday, did we? What's a cell? Well, it's a, it's a, um, a very, very small unit of uh, uh, of apparatus, I can't think of a better word, thing, which produces electrical current or potential difference, gives us a voltage. And of course, if we put a whole bunch of cells together, we get a battery and batteries use different combinations of metals. So we have the lithium ion battery, which is used a lot in, uh, in modern apparatuses like, like phones. Um, of course, lithium is quite high up the reactivity series so it's going to give us quite a quite a reactive or high high potential in the reaction so that's our that's our that's our cell and we can have lots of different combinations of metals the first cell uh, created by mr volta no less of italian fame um was was copper and zinc and he had layers of copper and zinc on top of each other separated with bits of damp tissue paper to act as his salt bridges and by having a whole bunch of layers he was able to create quite a sizable uh, voltage from that. Uh, okay so what? Well the so what is that we get a we get a, a nice juicy voltage from magnesium silver I don't know, don't know what I get I haven't written it down anywhere um, 3.18 volts there we are but what we can't say is how much of that comes from the magnesium and how much comes from the silver we still haven't solved uh, that problem so, what we have to do is get rid of the silver electrode, bye bye, and replace it with the standard hydrogen electrode. So, it might sound odd to use hydrogen as an electrode. How can I use hydrogen as an electrode? We've got to have a piece of metal to put in the solution to conduct the electricity, surely. Well, we'll, we'll still use that. We'll have a piece of platinum instead, uh, which makes them quite pricey, which is probably why I'm talking about it rather than showing you one. So there's our uh, platinum electrode. And we need to have hydrogen, 
passing over that. So we have a little, uh, a clever little container here, which passes down over the the platinum. Sorry, that needs to be a little bit higher. There we are. Passes down over the platinum, um, and then we pipe into that our hydrogen gas. So we have a constant flow of hydrogen gas coming over our platinum electrode. And then we dunk all of that into a beaker of, well, of what? Well, it has to be hydrogen in solution. What's hydrogen in solution? Well, hydrogen ions. So we have a beaker containing hydrogen ions. Now we want everything to be standard uh, it's a standard hydrogen electrode. That means we're doing it all under standard conditions. One mole per dm cubed H plus is a standard condition for H plus. Hydrogen gas needs to be at uh, one atmosphere or 100 kPa pressure, a standard pressure, and also the whole thing would be done at 298 Kelvin, standard temperature and pressure. So you, you remember the little, the little standard symbol we use Looks like a sort of London Underground symbol. We saw that for uh, delta H, delta S um, in the uh, in the thermodynamics topic. Okay, over here I would need it to be uh, one mole per dm cubed uh, magnesium two plus solution as well, so that we're getting a, a standard reading there. So I could do all of this, uh, and I, I would get a, a, a voltage reading. Um, and the voltage reading would be 2.38 volts. Okay, so you might say, ask the question again, well, how do we know how much of that is from the magnesium and how much is from the hydrogen? So the, the idea here is that we say, by definition, by definition, the standard hydrogen electrode contributes nothing. And we don't know if hydrogen's being oxidized or reduced, so we use a reversible arrow, and that is contributing 0, 0.00 volts. In other words, whatever reading I get on the voltmeter up here, that is all from the metal. And now this is marvelous because I can just swap out lots of different metals here. I can put in copper and lead and tin and zinc and see how much each of them delivers the, the, the voltage. And then from that, I can construct a table of, of uh, standard electrode potentials. Okay. Standard electrode potential. Okay. So if I look at magnesium, um, So magnesium, so magnesium two plus, that's what's going on here. Magnesium is pretty reactive metal, so um, it's more reactive than, than H, uh, than hydrogen. Um, that is giving off, that is giving off 2.38 volts. Okay. I just need to be a little bit careful though, because if I, if I put copper in here, how would how would things be different? Let's just remind ourselves of our reactivity series. Um, so we've got the reactive metals at the top, and then calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, tin, lead. Hydrogen goes in there in the reactivity series, and then we have copper, silver, and gold, and so on. So we have hydrogen in the reactivity series to remind us, if I, if I drop a piece of zinc into some acid, it'll react to zinc and, zinc and hydrochloric acid, we make zinc chloride and hydrogen gas, I'm making hydrogen. If I drop copper into acid, nothing happens, because hydrogen's more reactive than copper. I could use hydrogen gas to extract copper from its ore, I could add copper oxide to hydrogen gas and the hydrogen would react and I'd be left with copper metal. So, that 
knowing where metals are in the reactivity series is, uh, is actually still still quite helpful, uh, even though it's you know it's got sort of GCSE connotations. Um, I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. Right, so let's let's say I put some copper here. Let's just change all of this. So I have a solution of copper sulfate probably and a piece of copper there. Um, off we go. What's the important difference here? Well, the important difference is the reaction goes the other way. Our electrons are now going the other way around the circuit. So actually, copper would be gaining electrons and informing copper metal. Now, this, this is going to get confusing very quickly if we have if we can write these electrodes any way round. Um, so we need to standardise things a bit. So the list is always the same. So I'm going to write all the reactions as reduction reactions. If uh, magnesium was more reactive and the electrons are going from right to left, I'm going to give that a negative voltage value. And if this metal is less reactive than hydrogen, the electrons are going this way, then I'm going to give that a positive value. And I forgot what it was. Okay. So now we have a way of directly comparing uh, metals from a set of values. Um, and they're called standard electron electrode potentials. They've been measured against the standard hydrogen electrode under standard conditions, one mole per dm cubed solutions, hydrogen gas at 100 kPa, everything at 298 Kelvin. And I can now use these values. Okay, so let's see how we use these values. Um, They are sometimes called standard reduction potentials, by the way, because they are always written as reduction. So you'll see both of those. Uh, and they have the symbol, capital E, with that familiar London Underground symbol indicating things were under standard conditions. Um, that usually gets pronounced as E naught. So these are sometimes referred to as E naught values. Okay, right, well, how can I use these values? Well, let's imagine that I wanted to know how much I would, what voltage I would get if I connected up a copper and a magnesium electrode together. So I would have uh, a piece of magnesium in some magnesium solution here, and I'd have a piece of copper in some copper solution here and I connect those up to a voltmeter and I'd have my salt bridge going around there what would happen again if this was under standard conditions they're all one mole per dm cubed solutions and presumably the wires have got no uh, loose connections and everything's working well the magnesium would be reacting to make magnesium ions and the copper ions are reacting to make copper. Why that way around? Well, mostly because magnesium is more reactive, right? If the more reactive metal tends to produce ions, the less reactive metal goes from ions to metal. Um, but also, if I tried to put it the other way around, the numbers would be negative. You, you can't force reactions to go uphill. It's like the thermodynamics topic, right? If it's if it's delta H positive and delta S negative, uh, there's no way that reaction is going to happen. And there's no way we could get magne magnesium ions to react with copper to make copper ions and, and magnesium. That would be uphill as far as the universe is concerned. So the magnesium is going to react and form magnesium ions. That's going in the opposite direction to that arrow. So I change the sign, just like delta H, go the opposite direction to the arrow. I'd change the sign. So magnesium is going to form magnesium 2 plus, and that would give me 2.38 volts. 
Uh, meanwhile, the copper, sorry, I got that the wrong way around. Mag, no, I didn't get that the wrong way around. I need to do copper the other way around. Copper, copper, uh, two plus ions would form copper, that's right. So that's going in the same direction as that reaction. So I just use that value as it is. And they add together to make 2.72 volts. So in theory, if I connected a magnesium electrode to a copper electrode, or half cell, these are often called half cells, um, that, that would give me quite a spicy little voltage, 2.72 volts.